Joe Rogan, a few years ago, said that if he were to vote in a Democratic primary, he would support Bernie Sanders. And I think that fooled a lot of people into thinking he was a better person than yeah, he is. The guy who has Brett Weinstein and Tulsi Gabbard uh, on his show uh, to fluff them uh, made hay out of a, a vo verbal endorsement of Bernie Sanders. Who would have thought? And he now is being a little bit, I think, more transparent or at least leaning into his true proclivities with his latest endorsement of a 2024 presidential candidate. Yeah, so all this stuff is happening while we have a dead man as a president. Yeah. You know, it's it's just um Are it's you throwing not, out any um, fun. any support towards anyone or are you going to hold off and uh cuz I know didn't Elon Musk uh come out recently for DeSantis? Yeah. yeah. I think Ron DeSantis would work as a good president. I mm -hmm. think I mean what he's done for Florida has been admirable. Look at I feel like I'm doing breaking news right now. Yeah. That wasn't even on purpose. <laughs> I feel like what he did for Florida, a lot of people gave him a lot of grief, but ultimately he was correct. He was correct when it comes to like deaths. He was correct when it comes to protecting our vulnerable populations. He was sorry. We have to just stop there. I can't. I can't with that. This has been driving me absolutely insane. Flo Seventy-five thousand people died in Florida from COVID. Seventy-five thousand. You know how many countries have that many? Only. 19, 18 if you don't include the United States, which Florida is a part of. So, like, if Florida was a country, and that's also, that's, which shows how bad America is doing generally, too. But, that, but, like, let me say a couple things about that. Because people say, well, you have to compare it to actual states in America. Well, and not just, like, Australia, for instance, which also did way better. All these, all, any other country. Like, um, which is, like... No, you don't, because there's a bipartisan agreement in this country to get things back to normal for the sake of commerce. On the one hand, you have people like DeSantis and the denialists who are completely staking out and anchoring us to uh, basically social murder on a widespread scale. And then you have the other side, which is Joe Biden, which is like, let's get things back to normal. So like this is it's is we really have no clue how many people like our fellow citizens were killed by this thing when they didn't need to be and all you need to do is compare it to uh other countries and the, like i mean it's it's the philippines as 100 million people has less people uh than dead from covid than texas which has uh like i forget like 20 30 million yeah A and um also florida should have been theoretically positioned to be in a better position because it was a, a, a state where there are a lot of out outdoor there's a lot of outdoor infrastructure um to that degree i mean look yeah. who knows um but at the same time the the idea that desantis objectively did a great job on covid is not um backed up by any metric taiwan has two million more people and only had about had under ten thousand, like six seven eight thousand people die the entire pandemic so far 10 times less than florida which has two million less people like we've just allowed people to die and this is this is we know who this is impacting mainly poor people like you want like a big thing five times more likely um in mexico if you're and this is adjusting for like the fact that you've already been tested like all these other different hurdles which might disproportionately affect poor people more, but even poor people who are this is killing poor people around, across, yeah. around, across the world. And Florida yeah, also yeah. has retirees who have the, just really quick, Matt, uh, retirees who also may have more money, have the ability to isolate to a degree that other states don't. Um, and uh, yeah, and probably, probably in terms of the older population, they're a bit more conscious about getting vaccinated. Go on. The the only two states it's correct with higher in terms of distribution of monoclonal oh. antibodies. Sorry. Any I, I meant go on to Binder. Keep going. That's all right. No, don't worry about it. I was, I was like, well, wow. <laughs> uh, the only two states with higher uh, numbers of COVID deaths in the U.S. are California and Texas, two states that are much larger than Florida. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's wild. 75,000 people. That's more people than uh, in my hometown, Bismarck, than lived in the entire town. Just dead. But if COVID. you didn't know any of those people, your life wasn't disrupted. That, I mean, I guess, yeah. Theoretically. And, and we're going to just, like, applaud this guy for being right on deaths on COVID. I mean, I'm in, it's, it's, it drives me insane. 
breaking news right now. Yeah. That wasn't even on purpose. Did it? For DeSantis? Yeah, yeah. I think Ron DeSantis would work as a good president. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, what he's done for Florida has been admirable. Look at I feel like I'm doing breaking news right now. Yeah. That wasn't even on purpose. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I feel like what he did for Florida, a lot of people gave him a lot of grief, but ultimately he was correct. He's he amazing. was correct when it comes to like deaths. He was correct when it comes to protecting our vulnerable populations. He was correct in terms of distribution of monoclonal antibodies. And he was furious when the government tried to pull those. Mm -hmm. They were trying to pull very effective treatments. You know, he it, is I'm sorry. not that perfect. Is just, He's a human being. But. That is not true that the government was trying to pull very effective monoclonal antibody treatments. Because of the uh, the commentary of right wingers and people like Joe Rogan who were encouraging people not to get vaccinated, there was a shortage of monoclonal antibodies. And at a certain period, I believe when Omic uh, Omicron, uh, if you guys could just uh, make sure that my timeline is accurate here, when uh, Omicron was uh, ramping up at the end of 2021 and into 2022, th the big problem there or wait, that was when Omicron was, right? Jeez, all this time is a flat circle. Um, whatever, whenever that was happening um, at the end of the year, there because it was a new variant, there was only one monoclonal antibody treatment that was working out of the three that were available at the time. So there were two that were not working for the variant, and then there was a mass shortage on the one that people like Joe Rogan we're pushing to their audience, which was unsustainable right. because it would be way easier and better to stop hospitalizations if people just got vaccinated. Um, yeah, but, this is from PolitiFact. Uh, DeSantis has a point that clinical data did not drive the decision, but that obscures a number of lab studies and admissions from drug makers themselves that these treatments were not helping people infected by the Omicron variant. Nowadays, that's uh, what almost every COVID-19 patient has. And this is really important because one Omicron. thing... I don't know why I'm saying Omicron. Um, one thing, <laughs> you see uh, Rogan uh, talk about monoclonal antibodies. And he's, you notice he's not bringing up like uh, ivermectin and all that stuff because that stuff's all bullshit now. But it's the same impulse, which is we got a wonder drug that's going to put this pandemic uh, away so we can get back to normal. And that's the exact same way DeSantis treated the monoclonal antibodies, which of course were a good treatment. But when you bank everything and you start stocking up on those monoclonal antibodies and then all of a sudden, oh crap, a new variant happened because I mean, which shouldn't have been a surprise, and all of a sudden that stuff isn't as efficacious, then DeSantis needs something to be like, oh crap, I've put all of my eggs in this one monoclonal antibodies basket. I need to make it look like this is a conspiracy by the CDC to save my ass. That's all that happened there. I keep going. He was correct when it comes to, like, deaths. He was correct when it comes to protecting our vulnerable populations. He was correct in terms of distribution of monoclonal antibodies. And he was furious when the government tried to pull those. They were trying to pull very effective treatments. You know, he is not perfect. He's a human being. But um, <laughs> what he's done is stand up for freedoms. And mm. people think that, that so this, this was some weird gaslighting shit that went on where people equated freedom and Ooh. saying the word freedom to like right wing bigotry and hate is yeah. so strange. It's actually incredibly uh, a, 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 a historical through line throughout history in terms of how bigotry has been justified in order to deny federal rights protections for black people, for women, um, for uh, bosses throughout the country. It's been disguised as freedom in order for um, capitalists to continue using exploitative labor practices, child labor. That's been all under the guise of freedom, Joe. So if you have any historical literacy, you'd be able to, to, to determine that. Um, you know, but it is interesting how this, uh, just really quick, this yeah. mainstream media uh, um, not a maverick who just looks at issues individually. Uh, he's not a part of the the real the regular news cycle of CNN or MSNBC. Has lined up entirely behind the right wing apparatuses media darling in Ron DeSantis, who they perceive as Trump without the baggage. So there's really nothing divergent about some anything that uh, Rogan is espousing here in terms of his pr uh, political proclivities. All right. Yeah, also, uh, you know, the idea that the claim that the, the government tried to stop Florida from using those those treatments. I mean, uh, Ron DeSantis is the uh, has made sure that Florida is the only state 
in the whole country, right? The only state, even Texas and Alabama and Louisiana, Missouri and Mississippi did this for did this. And Ron DeSantis is Florida hasn't the only state to not pre-order vaccines from the federal government for children when they're distributed because Ron DeSantis says he does not want his state taking part in that. Um, so much for freedom for the people of Florida to be able to easily choose whether to vaccinate their children or not, right? It'll be much harder for healthcare facilities to access uh, those vaccines, A, if they're in short number uh, numbers because Florida didn't pre-order them for its uh, people, or you know, B, just the idea that these organizations will, will not have to deal directly with the federal government instead of going to, to the state, which would probably be easier for them to do. Uh, I think- yeah, I mean, and speaking of freedom, just also um, earlier this month, DeSantis moves to ban transition care for transgender youths and Medicaid patients. So, Joe Rogan, you uh, uh, roided up freak. Uh, <laughs> Where is it? What about uh, freedom for uh, trans kids? Like you talk about freedom, and this is this is this is what's so infuriating about Joe is because he's like, and people start gaslighting. No, you're just a moron, bro. You just haven't read shit, and and you've got probably brain damage because you want like Edmund S. Morgan. This is a book that everyone should read. I don't know if Joe could read. Maybe you get a book on tape. Ed, American <laughs> slavery, American freedom. Uh, the, our our uh, value of freedom comes directly from slave owners who are like, isn't it nice that all we have to do is ride around a fucking horse on our plantation all day telling people to do work? And isn't it great that what freedom is? That's where our conception of freedom is. So it's not an accident, Joe, that the, it's not gaslighting. It's just our history. And we've all inherited it. And you're doing your job to reinforce it. No, that's a great point. I was going to kind of... Uh sort of gets me to what I was going to say, which is that I think Joe Rogan is very useful as like a dumb guy weather vane because like he seems to always have like his finger firmly like on the prostate of what like any you would say pseudo plugged in, like pseudo plugged in like average American, like just sort of like guy theoretically who's like sort of into sports, sort of into like, you know, video games, sort of into like just like, you know, basic guy shit would be thinking at a time. And I think a lot of people confuse that for having like real insight, like Joe Rogan having real insight into some, you know, population of people in America, like the average American, but no, he's like, he's just one of them. Like he's their president, but also like, you know, their greatest consumer of American propaganda, but he's just been allowed to, I mean, not been allowed to, he's carved out for himself a niche where he just plays everybody's like, you know, avatar for them to talk to like Dana White or talk to like Neil deGrasse Tyson about their dumb guy ideas. But you know, I think when it comes down to what you were saying, Matt, it's true. And a lot of people don't realize this. It's just like freedom in America is a zero sum game for a lot of people. You know, what they mm-hmm. think is that like freedom by nature of how it's always existed in this country where some people have it and some people don't have it is a matter of like one group dominating another group by enforcing their freedoms over the other group. And so when it comes down to the freedom to have guns, it's always just like, well, you know, how come my freedom to own a gun should be superseded by your freedom to not be shot? going to going to school little boy like like that's the kind of arguments we have in this country because we're taught to view freedom as like diametrically opposed positions fighting for like the right to dominate the other versus you know freedom as a series of evolving rights that a dynamic society is constantly negotiating you know for like the greater public good and it's just like a series of like antagonisms in america yeah right Fine. Joe, Joe, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Joe, Joe Rogan would probably look at those examples that you guys gave those historical examples and, and they're completely accurate, but he'd probably look at them and be like, no, no, see, that's not the. But we have a recent example of Joe Rogan uh, cheering for such an example of freedom uh, just this past year, for example, in like 2001, when all these poor small business owners were demanding that workers go back to their jobs during a pandemic to serve their business yep. uh, for low wages. And how dare we give them the opportunity to move on up, to have a better choice to work somewhere that would pay them better wages and better working conditions. And we saw that the government gave in to those small business owners and larger corporations idea of what freedom is to them, the freedom to enforce that those workers slave away for their business during a pandemic for, for low wages. No, absolutely. It's the freedom of small business owners in, you know, 
quote unquote, the people who have made it in our society to have a permanent servant class. You know, we have to have waitresses, we have to have janitors, we have to have all those people who have fallen through the cracks of our incredibly predatory society and incredibly predatory, uh, you know, uh, social uh, socioeconomic uh, caste system where they're forced into low wage labor in order to prove to people who have white collar jobs or who have like accumulated large amounts of wealth that like, wow, isn't it so good that I don't have to be a barista? Isn't it so good that I don't have to be the other person on the side of this sort of like clearly predatory arrangement? And, you know, with during the pandemic, people were being forced to work at home, the work from home class sort of carved out a niche for themselves, but they were also forced to, in many ways, abandon the servant economy that America has always used to justify our low wages and lack of, you know, social mobility. It's not a coincidence that the servant economy uh, was uh, promulgated and grew exponentially as multi uh or global multilateral or no, no, it's actually, uh, whatever the trade, the, the trade deals like NAFTA, et cetera, and free trade became more, um, cemented and corporate power increased. Um, because that is the, oh, the options were, were decreased ma- manufacturing and, uh, high wage jobs and union jobs were undercut. And now there needs to be a justification for that kind of predatory economy.